back with another video. In today's video, as the child suggests, what if Naruto was a Hyuga, Senju, Uchiha, Namikaze, and Uzumaki? I think I didn't make this clear in the last part, but Naruto was also a Uzumaki and Namikaze. Namikaze, due to the fact that Asui Hyuga is half Namikaze and half Hyuga and, and Uzumaki, because Kushina is, well, in Uzumaki. At least according to the, <laughs> the manga in anime. The like goal for this video is going to be 500 likes. Uh, you don't have to hit that, but uh, that will get this series out faster. Mainly, I s was going to put this on a community tab, but uh, I decided to say it in a video instead. I'm going to be focusing on three main series. Those being, what if Naruto was a Hyuga Senju Uzumaki Namikaze, you know, etc. And what if Naruto had an ancient dojutsu as well as as well as what if Naruto was the ultimate life form? So, uh, just to build a sense of community, if you will, uh, up amongst my uh, fan base, as I I tend to get the comments, why do you keep uh, restarting series and just like keep making part ones, right? So, I'm a build a sense of trust, if you will, or community within my what if, so that. Um, and try to finish those ones. So make sure to like, share the video to a friend who likes what ifs, or just anime content in general. Comment down below solely Naruto based what ifs, as I can add those to my uh, legendary vault. Check out my Discord server down below. Subscribe as I want to hit 5k by June and 10k by the end of the year. Check out my boy Otaku Boy X in the description, as well as a few collabs he's done, as uh, he is an amazing content creator, and I can't stress that enough. And uh, with that being said, uh, let's hop into the video. We left off with Naruto, Sasuke, and Tanari, as well as their squad leader, Kel, initiating combat with Zabaza and Kisame of the Akatsuki. Naruto, after recognizing who his opponents were, would tense up in fear as he stood still. Naruto, being a vital player on his team, would put his team in danger due to his fear. Naruto's body would start to quake, with fear as he mustered up the strength to move, dodging Kisame's attack, but being hit with the fins of Samehara, which dug into Naruto's skin, gouging out a piece of flesh. Damn it, Naruto would say, as he would grit his teeth. I was too afraid. I was so afraid that I was too slow to dodge it completely. Naruto would grab his wound, as he would then clash swords with Kisame. Kisame, while fighting Naruto, would tell Naruto that once hit with the blade Samehara, and it's breached the flesh. That limb that has been inflicted with damage will get infected and spread throughout your body, similar to a poison. Naruto, hearing this, would brush it off. Kisame would tell Naruto that he should have listened to him, asking of Naruto's name. Naruto would say Uzumaki Naruto, the future Hokage of the Leaf. Naruto would then throw a punch at Kisame. Kisame would duck and grab Naruto's arm relentlessly, using Samehara to hold Naruto's leg in, legs in place. As he pulled Naruto's arm forward and completely off, Naruto would go wide-eyed. My arm! Gah! Kisame would start to speak. Us, the Akatsuki's goal is to gather the biju. You're the Nine Tails Jinjuriki. So, since you're right here for the taking, I'll immobilize you limb by limb, which will lend for no escape. Naruto would yellow and in fear yet again. No escape, he thought. Naruto would then fight the pain of his arm being torn off as he ran towards Kisame, slicing him with his sword. It had seemed that Naruto's fight for survival had boosted his speed. Naruto would continue to press Kisame while fighting the shark-like man. Purple eyes would appear within both of Naruto's eye sockets, as an arm would then take Naruto's former arm's place. The QB had used its own chakra as well as Naruto's, and with the power of the Asura path, provided and lended by the Renegon, Naruto would have a good as new arm. Naruto seeing his arm regenerate with smirk, creating 100 clones in its wake. Naruto would then send these clones towards Kisame. Kisame would slice away one by one. The these clones would start to die due to the sharpness of Samehara. 
and Kisama's cutting edge power. Kisama would then use a jutsu similar to the water printed jutsu, the same jutsu he had used on B. Naruto would be stuck in this prison of water as he tried to escape. He would be bombarded by the feeling of lack of air as whenever he moved to try to escape, the ball would follow him, not making or just basically making Naruto unable to free himself from this cage he had found himself stuck in. Naruto would open his mouth, knowing that water would then start to flow into his body and he would start to choke under the sea or under the water. It had just felt like a sea to Naruto, being encased in the blue murky water. You said no escape, Kisame. We'll all prove you wrong. Naruto would realize he was going to drown. He... He was not going to drown. That and those words would flow through Naruto's mind. He was stronger than that. He was stronger than to just give up. Than to just let let somebody kill him. Than for himself not be able to not be able to win. Naruto was the strongest he could be. God, Naruto would yell as Naruto did this. He would accidentally use Almighty Push, destroying the water prison entirely. Naruto would then step out of the aftermath, hair drenched in water and clothes soaked. Naruto would be angered. He had enough. Infuriated he would be as he would access the Kyubi Chakra. Two tails would appear behind Naruto. It had seemed that after accessing the power of the Renegon, Kurama was more willing to give Naruto Chakra. Naruto, with his amp, plus his Renegon amp, would rush at Kisame, as he would then let his Byakugan appear within his eyes, blitzing Kisame as he used the 8 Trigram 64 Palms technique on the Akatsuki member. Kisame's Chakra Network would then shut down. Naruto, taking advantage of this, would grab Samehara, this blade would tear into Naruto's Kyubi cloak. Naruto would fight past this pain as he would then pull Kisame towards him, using an Uchiha-style Great Fireball Jutsu to incinerate Kisame where he stood. Naruto would then see that his squad was able to somewhat defeat Zabuza Momochi, the Demon of the Mist, who had now been tied to a tree with Sasuke being in front of him with a sword. Naruto would then look at Sasuke nodding. This was their way of saying that Zabuza was to die. Sasuke would then do a butterfly like flip, bringing his blade down to Zabuza's head. Three Senbon would stop Naruto or stop Sasuke's blade in its tracks. This was also stop Naruto. As these three Senbon stopped Naruto, Naruto would tell Sasuke that it'll take care of the problem that had occurred. Naruto would then fall on one knee, coughing up blood as he panted severely. Naruto had taken heavy damage, not noticing the true extent to his wounds as he would stand, telling Tanari that as long as he can catch him once he's unable to move, then he can continue to fight. Tanari, Tanari Uchiha would then rush to Naruto's aid, telling Naruto that he's happy to help. Naruto would smirk thank you tanari he would say as this smirk would then turn into a smile tanari would then slap naruto thanks for the adrenaline naruto would under under his bluff as his words would seem to be slurred from the lack of food within naruto's stomach and energy that he had left he would then see Haku with the Byakugan, clashing swords, Senbon to sword with the ice user. Haku would then waste no time using the demonic ice mirror's jutsu on Naruto. Naruto would see this, telling Haku that if his plan is to freeze him to death, then it's no use. Naruto would then see Haku rush at Naruto. Haku, in this attempt, managed to draw blood from Naruto, something Naruto hadn't expected. Naruto would then be bombarded by Haku, who would press Naruto. Naruto would then close his eyes, envisioning a leaf being sliced in half. Haku would then rush at Naruto, Senbon in hand. Naruto would see this putting four hand signs together 
in an instance, this would blow Haku away. It had seemed that due to the Renegon, Naruto was able to master the wind chakra nature and use it against Haku. Naruto, seeing what he had done, would use a jutsu he already knew, the Uchiha style Great Fireball Jutsu, mixed with wind chakra to amp the attack entirely. Naruto would manage to melt the ice mirrors for but an instance of time. Naruto would then rush at Haku. Using his superior strength, he would annihilate the ice mirrors entirely, grabbing Haku by his collar and slamming him into the floor outside of the mirrors. Naruto would then be hit with the change of environment, which made Naruto's body sway side to side from not only exhaustion, but only but also from pain. Naruto's Byakugan and Renegon would deactivate, with his Sharingan taking its place. Naruto would then unsheathe his blade, as he would cut through Haku, who would fall down behind him. Naruto would then fall face first onto the dirt beneath him, turning in Haku's direction as he began to crawl. I won't pass out, not yet, nor will I die. Haku would then start to speak. Naruto would ask Naruto, at least Naruto would ask himself this question. Why? Why would he risk his life to make sure that some boy was okay? That some boy lived to see another day? It had seen that Naruto had felt connected to Haku. Haku thinking the same thing, would ask Naruto why he would risk his own life to avenge his master, and why he cared so much for two people who, in Haku's mind, would be evil to Naruto. In Naruto's mind, he thought the same thing. He was evil. Haku would cut off Naruto's train of thought and his own speaking. Zabuza had practically been my father, and Kisame had always taught me how to be strong. When others were weak, when others faltered, Naruto would understand, picking Haku up. Hmm, well that explains why. That explains why you would throw your life for them. That explains why you care to avenge such, such people who in my eyes are creatures, monsters who serve the purpose of being a weapon for their villages, or rogue ninja who deserted their villages, which, well, makes me... <coughs> Sick to my stomach to desert a village, cause or not, as I know Zabaza was a man who wanted a coup. To desert your village and leave it in the dust, well, that's devastating. Not only to the village, but the people in there that you cared about. It's kind of scummish, Naruto thought to himself. Eh, well, that's just me. Naruto would then put Haku on his back. Haku would jump off of Naruto's back, grabbing two Senbon and stabbing himself with them, ending his life. In Haku's dying breath, Haku would tell Naruto that he shall accomplish his dreams. Naruto would be sad as he started to cry. Why, Haku? Why would you? Why would you kill yourself? Haku would cut Naruto off. It's because people like me are meant to die in this world. We serve no purpose but to be powerful weapons to kill others, used by other people with the same purpose. As we mean nothing, and I for sure mean nothing, but you, Naruto, you and your friends are different. They weren't doomed to live a life of destruction. Naruto's eyes would start to move side to side as they would then start to spin and rotate faster than they had ever before. Naruto had awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan, a dojutsu that allowed Naruto to break through his limits through rage alone. Naruto's eyes would be focused, more focused they, than they had ever been in his life. And ever, Naruto knew. Naruto, through his rage, would be infuriated, unlocking his first ability from the dojutsu, as he would then put Haku under a genjutsu. While in this genjutsu, Haku would live life with Zabuza and Kisame, settling down and having his own 
children and then dying of old age. Naruto's eyes would then start to bleed as he closed his eyes. Naruto would then pass out, falling down and into a pond below. Naruto would then sit at the bottom of the pond. Naruto knew he was unconscious, but couldn't move. He could do nothing about it. Was he dead, he thought. Was he going to die? He was a fool. He should have avoided the puddle. Or the pond that he had thought was just a mere puddle. Tanari Uchiha, Sasuke Uchiha, and Kel their Jonin squad leader, had finished off Zabuza as they would then find Naruto at the bottom of this pond, almost dead. They would then pull out Naruto, who would cough up water. Sasuke would put Naruto on his back. Tanari and Kel would tell Sasuke to put him down. He's in no condition to be carried like that. Sasuke would say that it's nothing. Naruto's been through much worse, whether it be when he trained nonstop with no food and water for two weeks, or battled Itachi and Fugaku, as well as myself, in a losing battle, I must say. No matter the obstacle in Naruto's way, he can win and he can survive. He must have told Haku, or whatever his name was, that he was going to survive. Because if he didn't, then he wouldn't be here breathing. It's sad to say that, but when Naruto gives people his word, he he doesn't turn back and will do anything. And I mean anything, Sensei. Well, to accomplish what he said, to make right what he did, or to keep his promises. Sasuke would then be asked by Naruto to put him down. Sasuke would then look behind him to Naruto. Naruto would nod with Sasuke immediately putting Naruto down. Kao would look at Sasuke. Start listening to me, Sasuke. I'm your Jonin squad leader. Sasuke would sniff, glaring at Kel. You may be my squad leader. But are you more skilled than me? No, you aren't. Neither of us need to answer that question, and both of us already know the answer. So then, why would I listen to you, Kel? I only listen to Naruto Itachi, and at times, my mother and father. The people who, if not for them, I wouldn't be here. Naruto would smirk as he lifted his head to the blue sky above. It's true, you're not the first one he hasn't listened to, Sensei. But I apologize for my brother's disobedience. Kel would shake his head. No, no, I understand. Naruto would then stand on his two legs. Are you sure? Because he can be stumbered at times. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and I understand. Naruto would then nod, walking over to Haku. He would then drag the body over to Zabuza's and Kisame's as he would then dig up a grave burying them. And putting both Kisame's sword, Haku Senbon, and Zabuza's executioner blade in front of their graves. Naruto would then hop onto Sasuke's body as Sasuke would be amazed at how Naruto had cared for these opponents that he had faced, what had triggered such emotions. The rest of their team, Tanari and Kel, had only been amazed at the fact that Naruto had still had such an abundance of strength left. Naruto would then be even more exhausted than before as his eyes would then start to close, getting drowsy from the tiredness of being awake for a decently long time and fighting nonstop. They would then arrive back at the village. Naruto's body would start to heal itself as the fusion of Uzumaki and Senji's cells aided in Naruto's almost fully recovery. Naruto would then jump off of Sasuke's back as they would all report to Fugaku, Uchiha, the fifth Hokage of the Leaf Village. As they explained what had happened, Fugaku would be proud of his son and nephew, telling Tanari Uchiha and Kel to leave the room, as he would then say that if those were their members, then all 
of their members are most likely S class ninja talking about the Akatsuki, of course. Meaning that we need to put an end to the Akatsuki before they become a bigger problem, Fugaku would say. So I'll station Ombu near each the Jinjuriki. I'll have these Ombu befriend the Jinjuriki and watch for the Akatsuki strike on them. The only two that won't be watched are the one in nine tails, you and Gara, the sand's most powerful weapon, as you are for us. Naruto would nod, walking home and fall asleep. While asleep, Naruto would ponder what had allowed him to use such a powerful genjutsu on Haku. It had still dazzled Naruto in a way that nothing had. Naruto would then appear before the QB with his subconscious. Naruto would ask Kurama who Naruto knows is the QB name. Basically, Kurama had asked Naruto how he knew his name. Naruto would say that he had told him, with Kurama scratching his fur. I had told you. It had seemed that Kurama had put up some facade. He had truly cared for Naruto enough so to tell him his name. But, to Naruto's surprise, Kurama was his name. Naruto had thought that a beast, at least in the eyes of the villagers, what he had heard, would lie to him, would deceive him. Naruto would brush this off, looking up at the QB. Do you know anything about a special Sharingan, able to use any genjutsu, or something like that? Kurama would think deeply. You mean the one that you used on the bandit mission? Yeah, that's it. What is it? Kurama would reply. That's what you seek, right? Yeah, that is, Naruto would answer. Well, if I had to guess, it would be the Mangekyo Sharingan. Naruto would pause. That sounded familiar to him. A special dojutsu that the Uchiha can unlock through experiences that cause trauma like the death of a best friend. Naruto would think to himself, had I really been that connected to Haku? Had his words dug that deep into my mind? And had he affected me so severely without even a blade in his hand? Naruto would think this as he exited his subconscious, waking up at around 1 p.m. As he walked out to his training grounds, Naruto would then meditate. Many thoughts would echo through Naruto's body. I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't fast enough to prevent Haku's suicide. I wasn't skilled enough to avoid bleeding. My body wasn't strong enough to handle the beating entirely. My mind was prepared to fight three S-class ninja. But I wasn't strong enough to do it. Was my mind weak? Or was my body weak? As these thoughts shrouded through Naruto's mind, he would open his eyes. A turquoise cloak would appear on Naruto's body. One of his eyes had been noticeable by Naruto to be Naruto's Sharingan. It was the Mangekyo. Through this rage, it had activated in fury. And in the other, the Tensegon had awakened within Naruto. As quickly as these eyes had activated, they would dissipate with Naruto going to the library to do research on two of his dojutsu, the Renegon and the Tensegon, or what he thought was an evolution of his Byakugan. Naruto would read up on all of the abilities known to man about the Renegon, learning that he can turn dead people into soldiers in a way that can make them alive and utilize the six paths. Naruto would also try to do research on the eye he had activated while meditating, finding nothing of it, concluding that he'd ask Hiyashi, who may have some idea of what the eye is. Naruto would then venture out to where the dead bodies of Zabaza and Haku were, as he would then dig up their graves. Naruto would put both of his hands onto Zabaza and Haku's heart, sort of reviving them. He would then do the same to all three of them as they would all now stand in front of Naruto with their Renegon in place of their usual eyes. Naruto would then say, Now, on you are, my three paths of Rami. Due to Naruto being a hybrid with so much different types of blood, the paths of Rami, or if I were to compare it to Pain, the first Renegon user, we see that the paths of Pain would actually respond to Naruto's orders and these paths of Rami who 
and which will be Naruto's paths and names, the paths of Rami, have emotion, can talk, use all of their abilities and skills, and the only difference from their previous selves is that they are loyal completely to Naruto and only Naruto. Let's go, three paths of Rami. Let's go. And with that being said, this has been What If Naruto Was a Hyuga Senju Was Unlocked. Sorry for all the, I don't know, like, stars and stuff. It is, um, it is 8 o'clock where I live, and I have not, or sorry, no, actually, it's 2, and I have not slept since, like, yesterday, because I need to get this video for you guys. But, um, make sure to like, share the video to a friend who likes this, or just anime content in general. Co check out my boy, I'll talk about X down below. Um, this is What If Naruto Was a Hyuga Senju Was Unlocked. Namikaze and Uchiha. Comment down below, solely Naruto based with ifs. Check out my Discord server in the description. Subscribe as I want to hit 5k by June and 10k by the end of the year. And as always, Rami X signing off.